Hi, I'm Katie Wood with Sustainable Today, and I'm here at the People's Co-op talking with Sarah Klein, Marketing Coordinator. Hi, Sarah. How are you doing today? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. So tell me a little bit about the People's Co-op. What is the People's Co-op? Sure. We are a natural food store. Um, we're community owned. We're located in southeast Portland, and um, we've actually been here for 37 years. So when I say community owned, that means we're a food cooperative. Um, I think a lot of folks don't quite know what a food cooperative is, and we're really just a grocery store like anywhere else. Anyone's welcome to shop. and. Um, you pay the same prices as anyone else, but in addition to that, there's another layer, and about, oh, 2,500, maybe a little more, folks own a share of the co-op, and um, the co-op legally exists for their benefit, so we are a store that really exists for the benefit of the people who shop here. As a member of People's, you uh, have a number of benefits. One of them is a patronage refund. So that means a percentage of what you spend at the store during the year is returned to you in the form of a check at the end of the year, um, and that percentage is determined by our board of directors, keeping the overall health and sustainability of the co-op in mind. Um, but I think in many of our members' minds, some of the more sense of place, um, community-oriented benefits are more important to them. We have a year-round farmer's market here in the courtyard on Wednesdays from 2 to 7, and that's what we like to call an organic or better farmer's market. Everybody is growing uh, without chemical pesticides or fertilizers, um, using sustainable labor practices. And that farmer's market is actually Portland's first farmer's market. It was started really by the farmers themselves about 14 years ago, and they just started coming out and setting up in front of the co-op. Um, they've been doing it ever since. So they have some really long-standing relationships with their shoppers and with each other. In a lot of ways, a farmer's market is like the farmer's social hour. Um, and I think everybody knows that people desire a closer connection to their food more and more, and they want to know where their food's coming from. From Gambia, Oregon. Oh, from Gambia. Okay. So the farmer's market is really a big draw, and we always have live music and food demos. And, um, some kids' activities. There's a whole gang of kids that runs around the farmer's market, enjoys themselves. We often close the street off, too, so that makes it an even bigger space for people to play. In. Echo Energy here. Just for there you go. Wonderful yeah. food. And it's delicious, you bet. Mm. We have a community room upstairs. It's a beautiful room with a wooden inlay floor that's all made from salvaged, reclaimed wood. Um, and with a great view of two of our eco roofs out of the windows up there. Where does your food come from? How do you go about purchasing your food? Very good question. I think that co-ops and particularly people's food co-op is uniquely situated in this agile position. The natural foods industry really started with people who wanted access to whole foods and to more natural, less processed foods and couldn't find them anywhere. So they started these buying clubs and the buying clubs started in people's living rooms and garages and became more and more popular and grew and eventually gained storefronts, which is exactly how people's food co-op started with the buying club 37 years ago. Back in 1990, Peoples had uh, began what is still currently an all-organic produce department. But everything in our produce department was grown without chemical pesticides or fertilizers in sustainable farming practices. We won't purchase anything knowingly that contains GMOs in it, it's genetically modified organisms. Um, we also don't have anything in the store with trans fat <laughs> um, or with artificial colors or flavors or preservatives. We also make every effort to purchase things with a minimal amount of packaging. Um, and we really focus on our bulk department. So we have, that's probably one of our biggest parts of the store is that a huge selection in bulk. And also in our produce department, we really focus on those two sections. We purchase them from farmers that are as close to us as possible. We are all vegetarian inside the store. We do recognize that a lot of our member owners and a lot of the people who work here ourselves are not vegetarians. Um, and while we really value being an all-vegetarian food co-op because that's a niche for us and we are happy to um, 
serve that need in Portland, we also recognize that people want to have a connection to ethically raised fish and um, poultry and things like that. And so we welcome those vendors at our farmer's market. We welcome um, fishermen who are practicing sustainable fishing uh, methods, and we also welcome folks who are raising poultry. So, in, But inside the store, we're all vegetarian, but that doesn't mean we don't have dairy products, and all of our dairy is from free-range animals that have not been given any um, growth hormones or antibiotics. And uh, same with our eggs. So we are very vigilant in making sure that the animal products that we do sell in the store are from animals that have had ethical, humane lives and are healthy for people to eat. Do you have any programs concerning food? Do you guys donate food to any special programs? We do, however, give out a lot of small food donations to local small organizations who are often working with food and farm issues. Um, we do about $100 a month of those donations and we'll often just give folks a gift card and let them buy what they want in our store or we'll help them to make special orders through our produce department or other departments. We also have something that's just for our members where it's a, it's a program based on trust, so we don't ask folks to bring us any of their personal documents, but if they're under a certain income level or on the Oregon Trail Plan or the, the Oregon Health Plan, we give them a 4% discount on everything that they buy. So when things start to wilt a little bit, we'll just pull them, everything off the rack because obviously we want our produce department to shine. Um, and we'll put it on a special shelf where everything's 59 cents a pound. So for, you know, things like greens and things like that, that's virtually free. And that's out in the store, so anyone can see that. And people certainly come in, and that, we call that our reduced shelf. And people will come in and just to check the reduced shelf, because there's often great deals on it. And then we'll really only leave things there for half a day or so, and then we move things back into the walk-in to try and keep it good as long as possible. And we have a box back there that's called our Food Not Bombs box. Food Not Bombs is an organization. They're a really grassroots organization, and I think they're actually a national organization. But they, they basically cook for folks who are living on the street. They collect um, donations, you know, food that's left over from play, places like People's Food Co-op and, um, you know, like Breadstop Bakery and all kinds of different local grocery stores and um, food producers, they collect the sort of seconds and they make meals out of it, serve it on the street and parks and things like that. So they pick things up, that's why it's called our Food Not Bombs box, and they pick the, that stuff up twice a week, but in the meantime there's often things that's really only going to be good for another 24 hours or so, and um, so people will just come in, sometimes folks who are living on the street and sometimes just low-income neighbors and shoppers will come in and, and they just ask us, can I check your Food Not Bombs box? And we often just send them back there ourselves. There's a lot of trust in the community. So they just go into our walk-in cooler and <laughs> dig through and come out with some bags. What's your recycling program like here at the People's Co-op? Do you have one? Yeah. <laughs> we have been composting for years and years. And we've been actually doing that in partnership with 47th Avenue Farm. That's Laura Masterson's farm. And we have some big plastic things out back, and we put all of our food scraps in there. And um, Laura, folks from Laura's farm, actually a people's volunteer, brings it over to Laura's farm. And um, let's go in her worm bins. So it turns into worm compost, and then she uses that for her farm. Um, and that's just a, a symbiotic relationship. We don't pay her to take our food scraps and she doesn't pay us for the compost. It's just we're working together. Um, we've recently started participating with the City of Portland. Um, it's a really cute program. It's called Portland Compost Businesses Dig It. <laughs> and so that lets us compost things that don't go in a warm bin. Um, for folks who are familiar with vermicomposting, that means that um, we can now compost all of our citrus and um, you know, paper that has food mixed in with it. So that all goes into the bins that the city of Portland picks up now. We also have a pretty extensive reuse ethic around here. So our members will just voluntarily bring in big stacks of used grocery bags um, that disappear like that. Everybody who's shopping who has forgotten their own grocery bag will ask. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for showing us around and telling us all about the People's Co-op. Of course, thank you so much for coming over. Yeah, and good luck with your development and everything. Thank you very much. Of course. And I'm Katie Wood bringing you the tools to make you more sustainable today.